Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and this is our weekly look at the Octurian Anthology, which is a work that was channeled by Tom Kenyon. Now, today we're going to be looking at Mary Magdalene. People know as Mary Magdalene, of course, on this channel. We know that she was just Magdalene, and I have not read ahead. But I just wanted to take a moment to remind everybody that when somebody is channeling information, the channeled information is coming through the, the knowledge and the perception of the channeler. And so when we get to things like Magdalene or Yeshua, there might be some con contradicting uh, stuff like the crucifixion um, that that we now know didn't happen and a lot of that it doesn't mean that tom kenyon was trying to fool anyone or anything like that it just means that when you've been told a story enough times it starts to become truth to you and so when you're channeling information you're putting it through the lens of that particular truth that you believe and so i just wanted to remind everybody of that in case it does come up in magdalene or Yeshua's channeling sessions. Now, I also want to, again, apologize if you hear any screaming or banging. Um, if you are new to the channel, uh, I've got a high rise being built literally less than 10 feet from the window in the room that I am in right now. There's nothing I can do about it. I do live right in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia. So it just, it is what it is. And I apologize if that becomes annoying. Um, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can really do about that. All right, and before we get into the reading, a quick word from our sponsors. My Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I'm 
feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life, every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed. But what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected God's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs. Because yes, friends, I am 40 years old, and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs, and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare. Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement, but from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring 
with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216. 8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and Jay or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside of the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. So again, this is the section um, in the Octarian Anthology of Mary Magdalene, or as we know her name, just to be Magdalene. And this is page 103, if you are following along. I find it an almost certainty that some individuals reading this may find it difficult to believe that biblical figures could have alien origins. But I assure you that many biblical characters had their origins in other worlds. And even the gods described were advanced alien intelligence misperceived. So if you're new to all of this stuff, I will be putting a playlist uh, where this other readings can be found down in the description box below. It's the playlist called Understanding the Magdalene. And yes, we know that a lot of these religions were founded based upon um, really extraterrestrials, not necessarily gods, but because they seem to have more advanced uh, abilities human beings thought that they were gods we also know from past channelings that the anunnaki did alter our dna to make us be more um have the propensity to want to be enslaved to follow a leader which is really easy to see we see people trying to follow a leader all the time and there is a difference between having like a teacher or a mentor and following a leader Right, following a leader can lead to enslavement, whereas a teacher or a mentor can lead to liberation. A teacher's job is to eventually not be needed. A leader's job is to always be needed. And so, yes, if you missed all of that, um, it again, it's down in the description box below under show notes, under the playlist, Understanding the Magdalene. Indeed, my entire human life was about this misperception, but that is another story. What I wish to address here is the story of how I came to understand my Octurian roots, my Octurian emanation, and how I recognized in Yahshua the same, meaning his Octurian emanation, and how in the joining of the two, he and I created a mission. Now, again, we know Magdalene is also Lyran. So, so you can be many things. I know that I am Lyran, I am Octurian, and I am Palladium with some other stuff as well. Um, we see that from the Sophia Code as she was able to shapeshift into a lion, and the Lyrans were... Um, the holders of the Christ consciousness, they had kind of a golden hue to them. And they their their job, literally a Lyran's ability, one of their abilities is to fight demons. And so we see that back in the Sophia Code. And so I wanted to acknowledge that you can be one of many, many origins. Just like, I mean, think about it, your natural state as, especially for the Americans, like what we're told, right? We don't know if any of this is really true. But, you know, Americans are mutts. They have a little bit of everything in their DNA. It's the same with the Galactics. When I was born, I knew that I was different. And so did my mother, God bless her, or I should say goddess bless her. It was her recognition of my difference that led her to take me to the temple of Isis, where I was trained in the mysteries of the great goddess, the cosmic mother. This training involved long hours of what she would call meditation. Now, I um, have said this before, from my understanding, Magdalene's mother actually died um, when Magdalene was a baby. So um, we see this reference a little bit again in past uh, past channeling. So it could be that it was her mother's wishes 
for her to be tra trained in the temple. We know that Magdalene's mother was completely taken out of the Bible. And that is something I'm very curious about because we see no reference to her mother, but apparently there are gospels that were written by her mother before Magdalene was born. And going back to where she talks about how Yeshua and her created a mission, that goes back to the original prophecy. You know, we were told, especially growing up Christian, that the original Jewish prophecy was that um, a Messiah was going to come and then was going to come back again. That wasn't the prophecy. That was the changed prophecy. That's because a good narcissistic psychopath always rewrites history, right? The original prophecy that was that one person wasn't coming twice, but that two people would come once and they would change the cosmic and cautious understanding of the Christ consciousness, a feminine and a masculine, Magdalene, Yeshua, nothing about them coming back, only them being here once to basically push the domino in a different direction. All right. And again, the root word of Messiah means a phallical pillar. Um, and if we look at Yeshua and Magdalene, if we see nowadays, we see the fish symbol being the sign of the Christian faith, but that's actually the Visica Pisces. So that was the original symbol of these Christian Gnostic schools that were started by Magdalene and Yeshua and their students. The Visica Pisces is the representation of Magdalene, the feminine, whereas the Messiah, the phallical pillar, is Yeshua, the masculine. Yeshua is not your Messiah. Yeshua is Magdalene's Messiah. And if, if you remember Return of the, uh, the Divine Sophia, the other Sophia book we went through, she, she showed all the research where um, in, in marriage, when they would do high priest and priestesses marriages, it would say Messiah and Visca Pisces. So Visca Pisces was the wife, the high priestess, where the Messiah was the priest, the joining of the two, divine feminine, divine masculine. And so, but if we look at the Visca Pisces being the fish symbol we see nowadays for Christians, it shows you historically just how important Magdalene was to this mission equally as important as Yeshua. Now, why did they turn her into a prostitute and why did they try to make her not his wife? Well, that's simple. It's because the divine feminine represents the intuition. And so as above, so below, as without, so within, as with the micro, as, as with the macro, as with the micro, right? So by desecrating Magdalene's name, it also intuitively, it's a spell casting, you start to desecrate your own intuitive arts, your own intuition, your own gut feeling, and move more into the masculine energy, which is the practical thought, right? And so very fascinating, very, very fascinating. Some of these were, uh, some of these, these meditations she's talking about in the temple, and that's it too. Yeshu and Magdalene were not Jewish. They were Egyptian. They had Jewish students, but they, they were Egyptian. They were of the priest and priesthood of Isis. That's what the Essenes, um, Isis, the spelling of Isis back then, E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, Essene, they were the priest and priest of Isis. They were Egyptian, right? Why do you think the controllers of the world want to make Isis so bad now? Because that's the actual, it's all inverted. Everything's inverted. All right, so let's go back. Some of these were done to the sounds of drums and hearts and other instruments, and we were moved in stylized manners to produce altered states of mind. And through these movements and sound inner doors would open and I was free from the constraints of the physical world. I would travel through the cosmos on the wings of Isis. And it was during this period of my training that I often found myself on Octurius, carried theirs there on the wings of Isis through a wormhole, a channel between the worlds so far apart yet so close in consciousness. I was trained to attune my mind so that I could enter these other worlds by my own volition. It was at some point in this cycle of training and service to the temple that I discovered my animation, my Octurian root. And I lived a very strange paradox for a while, experiencing myself as a human woman in training to be a priestess, and at the same time, possessing an identity as an Octurian. It was a strange mismatch between a human and an emanation. But as I began to more fully understand my emanation, I began to fully appreciate its gifts as well as its, what shall I call it, challenges? I'm coming forward to speak in this material for the benefit of others who possess Octurian emanations and for those who possess emanations from other worlds as well. 
Yours is a unique challenge to live the life as a human being, knowing that there is more of you. And yet, how do you bring the unique gifts of your animations into your human life without drawing too much of the wrong attention to yourself? Make no mistake about it. As a collective, human beings mistrust the emanations from other worlds. For some of you, it is as if you are bringing great treasures, but no one recognizes it. For some of you, you have unveiled your gifts to others and they have betrayed you or out of their own ignorance misunderstood what you were offering. I'm sure a lot of people that resonates with. These quandaries must be dealt with by all those who carry emanations. And my story is no better than yours. Yet, I hope in my recounting of this story, you may better understand your own predicament. And it is my hope that you will find a path through yourself whereby you can appreciate and love your emanations for what it is. In this simplest form, an animation is an energetic that possesses its own intelligence. In my case, it was an Octarian animation, and thus I carried with it my nature as energetic response to situations that was Octarian, not human. And the intelligence I used at times to solve problems was Octarian and not human. To my fellow humans, this just seemed odd and strange. But to those who were psychic, it was clear that I was operating with an animation as part of my nature. Thus, animations impart to the individual ways of being and ways of acting in the world that are different from and sometimes contrary to the human nature of the individual. Let me now turn our attention back to the Temple of Isis. I was most fortunate in that the High Priestess recognized not only my potential, but also my emanation. She was well prepared to deal with such a being as me. It was no easy task, for I was headstrong. This was a result of my animation, for we Octurians are action-oriented and ready to face any conflict without a second glance. My teacher trained me in patience. And she unveiled for me my emanation through deep meditations, which we did together in the inner sanctum of the temple. It was after almost a year that she said to me that my training would take a new course. I was to be trained in the sex magic of Isis and the deep mysteries of the, alchemi of the alchemies of Horus. As I recounted this story, I'm brought to tears by my love and respect for this teacher of mine and those carefree days in the temple before my work in the world began. The sex magic of Isis was considered a most sacred path. It involved the use of sexual energy to transform personal consciousness, to arouse the serpent that lies dormant at the base of the spine of the Jed, the sacred pathway of the chakras into the higher brain centers, thereby opening doorways into other worlds and to unify personal consciousness through the sacred marriage that occurs within the interim sanctum, sanctum of the brain. And we talked about this with the Magdalene man manuscript, which is also in the same playlist. In Sanskrit, the Jed, as most of you have heard me say, is Shashuna. It is the, the channel of energy that runs up the spine and runs through the chakras, right? It's like the chakras are the spinning wheel and the, 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 the um, Jed or Shashumna is kind of that tube of energy that runs through them, okay? This is what the obelisk is. Like a lot of people in our world think the obelisk is Osiris's penis. That's not true. That's part of junk conspiracy. That's part of misleading you. The jed, when you see from the Egyptians, was used as an antenna, the same as your spine is. So again, as with the macro, so with the micro. As above, so below. As with your inner world, so with the outer world. So the same way that the shashumna, the jed, the spine, the tube on the spine, works as an antenna for your own energy, these obelisks we see around the world are also harnessing energy, right? So we don't necessarily want to take them all down. Remember, darkness can't create anything. If you think darkness can create something, then you are giving the darkness way too much power and you're very uneducated when it comes to science. Darkness can't, with, with the absence of light, 
there can be no creation because light is the creation. So everything that the dark ones, the bad guys, the controllers have used in this world to hurt us is an inversion of something that was created for good. And so if we were to try to take down everything in this world that has been used to hurt us, we would have nothing left right? Because everything was originally created for the good. No, our job is to course correct. Remember, Lucifer is the god of destruction and chaos. Our god is the god of healing and mercy. Our job is to heal and to take back what was ours. So I just wanted to remind you guys of that. I did not know it then, but I understood it when I first met Yahshua. What I was referring to here is why my t teacher changed the course of my training. I thought I was being trained to become a high priestess myself. Never did it occur to me that I would become a priestess of high sexuality or that I would use this knowledge in union with a male that would become my husband. I thought I had entered a celibate life. This is because the high priestesses cultivate their own sexual energy until it becomes a burning cauldron and the pressure would fling them into the other worlds. I thought this was the path I was entering and so became quite surprised to me when my teacher said I would be training in the mysteries of the sex magic of Isis. And so I want to point something out here else as well. And she talks about this in the Magdalene manuscript. Magdalene manuscript. When you think about the sex magic of Isis, a lot of people misunderstand this. They're thinking about sex parties of orgies or whatever. No, Magdalene only had one partner. That was Yeshua. Yeshua only had one partner. That was Magdalene. And so when we look at this in its purest form, it is you with your counterpart. It's not you with any Tom, Dick, or Harry you meet at a bar on a Saturday night. I mean, if that's what you want to do, do you, boo. But there's a karmic exchange. It's you with your other half. That's it. That's where the term making love comes from. After I completed my training in the arts and sciences of sexual transformation and the alchemies of Horus, it was determined by my teachers that I was well prepared for the task. After my final initiation, marking me as a high priestess of sex magic of Isis, my main teacher took me into the inner sanctum and handed me a snake bracelet. This was the symbol and it marked me to those who knew as a high initiate and master of the sex magic of Isis. So that the... the the cuffs you see women wear with that, that was them marking them as a high priestess in this, this type of alchemy of making love. Again, it didn't mean that they were out there having sex with everybody. No, they were using their own partner to achieve this type of, of consciousness and awakening. And the serpent, you know, again, I'm going to remind you guys, darkness can't create anything. Lucifer did not create the freaking serpent. God did. It was always created by God first. So, to think that the serpent is somehow just always malevolent and evil is, is a grossly uh, ignorant thought to have. Give God more credit than that, right? The Satan can't create anything. So it's it's an inversion because that's ser the serpent represents the rising of the Christ consciousness. That's the Kundalini. And so, of course, the dark ones, of course, the bad ones, we're going to try to invert the serpent and make people terrified of the serpent because the rising of the Christ consciousness is what frees us and liberates us. And the day that I had met Yahshua by the well, I was wearing this bracelet and his mother, also initiate of Isis, recognized my bracelet. And in that moment, when I looked into his eyes and into her eyes, I understood why my teacher in the temple had changed my course of destiny. The animation within me, dormant for all those years, was now entering a mission that had been planned long before my embodiment as a human woman. And the story involved the Holy Trinity of Yeshua, his mother, and myself. And I laugh at the irony of those words. I have a different view on the Holy Trinity um, from what we learned from uh, the Return of the Divine Sophia. The Holy Trinity is you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Mother, Daughter, Holy Spirit, it's you. It's you and your relationship with your spirit and God. The central feature of an emanation I wish to discuss is the am amnesia that surrounds it. I knew that I was different from others. How many does that resonate with? I knew that I was different from others. I didn't know why exactly, but I knew. My mother knew it as well. And when she took me to the temple of Isis, the high priestess saw it. And when I was passed from the care of my mother into the care of the high priestess, I entered a new chapter in my life. But even then, I did not understand my emanation. 
even when I found myself flung through the portal to Arcturus through altered states of mind, I did not understand my emanation. As my teacher took me under her wing and unveiled more and more of my emanation to me, I began to slightly understand it. But I find it curious to this day that I did not fully understand it until I looked into the eyes of Yahshua. My mind was shattered by the recognition. And my heart was shattered by my love for him. And through the pieces of myself, I looked into the eyes of his mother, who recognized me. And I knew in a flash the full breath of my animation and the purpose of my mission. All of it revealed to me by an instant by that well. How ironic and how typical. So for those who say they don't believe in love at first sight, I absolutely do believe in love at first sight. And I think that's because there is a recognition in people's eyes. When you meet people's eyes, you see, even though we go through amnesia, as she's saying, you see the imprint of an agreement that you previously made with another person, especially when it's your other half. As Yeshua and I began to discover more about each other, it was clear that both of us were on a mission together. He would be the one presented to the world and I would be in the shadows. I had no problem with this and I still have no problem with this. She was the main teacher, guys. We know that from other stuff. She was the main teacher. I think, again, this is the um, confirmation bias coming from Tom Kenyon because of how we were all raised, right? The, the truth we were we were told to believe. It was part of the mission, and part of the mission involved me transferring to Yahshua the cosmic powers that I had accepted through the mysteries of Isis. So, yes, again, I think that's Tom Kenyon's own bias. Because, of course, how in our modern world could a woman, a woman possibly be the main teacher? How could she be? Of course, Tom Kenyon, I don't think he's a chauvinist. But we are programmed to believe that the man is the dominant one. And I'm not saying that men and women are, you know, I had a great teacher in high school that would say men and women are not, they need to be equal, but not identical. They're obviously different. The feminine, divine, feminine, divine, masculine energies are very different, but they are, have served equal purposes. So for her to have to transfer everything over to him, for him to do his job, in my opinion, is part of Tom Kenyon's confirmation bias into the world we were born into that it has to be a man that does things. No, because we know from other works, she, she was literally like, she was the main the main one she was the main that's why the visca pisces is still around today for the christians they call it the fish it's the visca pisces it's the female it's literally a vagina like it's the female that 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 is is the representation of the christian the symbol of christianity to this day all right and in our love making we would enter high tantra together and there were many times when we would find ourselves in two places at once our bodies would be entwined in sexual embrace and ecstasy, while at the same time we experienced ourselves on Octurus, undergoing rituals of empowerment. And at times we would both enter into regeneration chambers using Octurian technology to strengthen our human selves. Regeneration is the ASEA, guys. And they talked about that at the beginning of this book, the liquid that you have to drink. That's the ASEA. When two persons, each possessing a similar emanation, join together, great power and creativity can be accessed. While we were together alone, we shared ecstatic states of body and mind that I could never describe with words. We flew together into the highest realms, and it was the most fulfilling time of my life. Those times when I was alone with Yahshua, away from the world, but we were on a mission that involved the world. And there is much I could say about this, but it is not the focus of my discussion at this time. In this material, Yahshua came forward briefly to discuss his quandary of the mission versus the need of the heart. We still discuss this between us in our realm of consciousness where we are joined together in the ninth dimension. As a woman, as a human woman, I understood the needs of the heart. And I am pleased that the Octurian civilization is finally turning its attention to this paradox. How it will turn out, I cannot say. But since the solution will come from the Octurian civilization itself, I trust that the resolution will be intelligent and highly creative. And now I return to my primary reason for speaking in this material. There are many reading these words who carry emanations from other worlds. 
there are many beings entering embodiments as human beings at this time who also carry emanations from other worlds. This is how humanity is most often affected from off-planet intelligence. The pressure between being a human and an emanation can be immense. Yet, this pressure is like the pressure that turns coal into diamonds. If you can bear the pressure, you will extract something from your life of great value. And having been through a human experience as an Octurian emanation, I can say that it is worth the price and I have no intention of returning. I wish those of you who carry emanations from other worlds, both graciousness and great serendipity into your life upon this most interesting and yet still primitive planet. May your emanations be a blessing to humanity and may your experience on this earth be a blessing to you.